Hi, good morning everybody. I thought I would uh, do a little video today on uh, my, the way I do my aquarium maintenance and setups and procedures I use and uh, a little bit about my experience in uh, aquariums. I, quite a few years ago, back in the 80s, I owned a pet store. Um, I had over a hundred tanks in my pet store and some of the pr procedures that I use, I wanted to share with you, and I still use them today. Uh, I've been keeping aquarium fish since I'm in my 20s. I'm 65 now, and uh, I see a lot of things on forums and stuff, and uh, they're not all wrong, but uh, some of the stuff uh, they go about is kind of overkill. Um, sometimes they, yeah, you're doing things you don't really need to do but I kind of wanted to share that with you today so uh, I've had a good success all the years there keeping uh, fish in aquariums and that so I thought I'd show, share with you a few procedures that I use. Alright this is my uh, 55 gallon tank here. Sorry about the reflection uh, off the back it's uh, not easy to film glass you tend to get all these reflections on it. But, uh, this tank here has been set up now for about a month and a half and uh, I just have uh, actually to start out uh, I wanted to show you that you'll see a lot of these little these are minnows these are the uh, what do you call them red rasbora minnows and uh, originally I, I started this tank and cycled it with the minnows um, use them because they're inexpensive you know you can get like uh, for two bucks, you can get like what ten for two bucks. And I originally put twenty of them in here. Uh, I've got sixteen left out of the twenty that I put in here. But their main purpose was to cycle the tank, let it go through the biological process. And uh, I lost a couple because you get some ammonia levels to build up until the tank builds up uh, enough bacteria to handle the waste of the fish. And in the meantime, I've added a few things. I've got a sword tail in here, and I've got a uh, balloon uh, molly in here. And the balloon molly, I don't know where you the picture, had a baby. And it uh, looks like a panda. You can see a good picture of it, but uh, that's a little panda molly that came from this, uh, this female balloon molly. Uh, I got a fantail guppy in here that uh, she hasn't, uh, if I can get her, she's looking straight at us, uh, she hasn't had her babies yet, but she's due. Uh, I really need to probably separate her to save the babies because the bigger fish will eat the babies. And uh, uh, so I've worked, played with that a little bit. But uh, as you can see, uh, this tank is nice and crystal clear. And uh, one of the reasons it stays clear is uh, a good filtration system. And up in the back, you can see I have a power filter that hangs over the back, it's the inlet there. And uh, this uh, tank here came from one of these starter kits that uh, they got at Walmart. And this is what they give you as far as the filtration system. And it's not enough. Uh, you know, it's a good start, but it's not enough. Um, so I've added a sump filter to this. Your filtration is one of the biggest uh, things, it's the heart of your system. Without proper filtration, it can uh, run into things like cloudy water, uh, you know, your biological load isn't big enough to handle the amount of fish that's in them. And uh, actually, you talk about load, the uh, minnows that I've used to cycle this will eventually will go into a, a little holding tank and I'll put more uh, select fish in here and the tank is just about to that point where I can start adding other things to it and remove some of the uh, uh, minnows that I use to cycle it out. Although they're very interesting to watch, very cheap, but uh, they're uh, constantly active. They just add a lot to the tank. And uh, I want to do a lot of live bears. You see there's the, uh, that's a male guppy there. And I do how I said, I have the female. She looks like she's about ready to, to let go some babies there. I'm going to have to be separating her. But back to the filter system, the filter I'm using on this is a homemade one. Uh, down here is the sump itself. And basically, I don't know if you can tell, 
But this is made out of one of those uh, plastic drawers. Um, you can buy them very inexpensive. And this is a storage box. You uh, just drill holes in each drawer and it drains down on top of each other until it goes back in the bottom, pumps it back into the tank. Um, I've used a three layer system. The first layer I just use a like a bonded piece of Dacron uh, and I just cover the entire tray, it's kind of like the polishing area, catches most of the debris. The second layer is nothing but soft Dacron. Um, and then the last layer, I have lava rock. This is lava rock I got at the uh, Home and Garden store, like Lowe's. And uh, it sets up biological action on it. And you can see it works really good. I had, the only cloudiness I had when I very, very first set this up, um, I had some cloudiness because uh, things like the gravel and stuff till it stabilized out. Once it did, um, you know, it cleared right up. And uh, I've done a few water changes on it. My little baby there on the side bit. I'll call her Panda. It's like a Panda Molly. But uh, you can see, uh, you look down through the end ways, how crystal clear the uh, water stays. And uh, another reason besides filtration is the amount you feed. Uh, especially new aquariums like to feed too much and overfeeding causes cloudiness and so you feed tiny amounts uh, a lot of people will think well my fish are always hungry well as a rule fish are always hungry they're they're gonna be begging for food constantly you can feed them five minutes later they're begging for food what happens is people tend to feed it more and more and more and they don't realize there's particles that is not getting ate up and it decays and rots and can cause cloudiness. So that's one of the other big reasons that you get cloudiness, especially in a new tank that hasn't been cycled. It takes between a month and six weeks to uh, cycle a tank. And uh, after that, you'll have a uh, pretty good biological bed set up in your filter system. And this is my 20 gallon tank. Uh, it's been set up just about a month now. It just finished its uh, cycle that it's went through um, and again you see I've got some iridescent sharks but I have a lot of these are feeder goldfish again use the feeder goldfish to cycle the tank because they're inexpensive they will be removed out of here and I will be putting some other things I think I'm going to use some uh, parrot fish in this tank uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about test kits uh, I noticed so many people are into the numbers that they're test kit. Checking pHs, um, you know, your ammonia levels, your nitrates, and these are all important. And it's nice to know what the uh, uh, levels are. Um, I don't test. I don't use test kits. I don't, never found a need to use them. But it will, does not hurt to use a test kit because you do, you know where your number's at. But the downside uh, to using the test kits, sometimes your numbers get a little bit off and you tend to panic and worry about it and stress over it. And kind of my book takes away a little bit from the enjoyment of uh, keeping the aquarium fish. And uh, so I've always chose not to. Now I've been doing this for a number of years and generally I can tell by the looks of the water or what, something going on with the fish that there's a problem somewhere and uh, even if you test one of the main things you do uh, when you have a problem you do a water change and I did a water change this morning uh, I changed five gallons here in this 20 gallon tank um, and that's an important thing to keep up on your water changes keeping fresh water in there remembering when you do it your water if you live in the city have chlorine you want to dechlorinate your water um, I like to use aquarium salt or I particularly use uh, what I use is swimming pool salt. It's non-iodized pure 100% salt. No additives to that and I'll use that and that helps a lot in adding electrolytes, adding the slime back to the fish. It's, it's very helpful. I've always used a lot of 100% pure salt. Table salt has iodine in it so you don't want to use that 
Uh, but again, I said I don't test. Uh, a lot of people like to test their pH, and uh, if you have an exotic fish or breeding or for some other reason, uh, uh, it doesn't hurt to keep your pH where you're at. But the issue with the pH is wherever your water comes from. I happen to have well water here. Uh, whatever your water comes from out of the well, it has its own pH, and it naturally balances out to a point in your tank, and your fish do adapt. Uh, unless you have some exotic breed, which don't, uh, your your most of the time your fish will adapt to whatever pH. Uh, I've never had an issue with pH in 40 years I've done this. Uh, I have never changed the pH in a tank. Um, I've bred fish off and on, and uh, even there I, I didn't. But you know you can get detailed and change your. Uh, um, you can change your, your pH around, you can do all your testing, uh, if you so. And that's another facet of the hobby, you can do that. And it uh, definitely will not hurt nothing, but it possibly could stress you out. Uh, and that's one reason I choose not to, uh, uh, you know, go through the, the testing thing. So I don't test, none of these tanks here have been tested. Uh, I haven't, even when I had my pet store, I didn't test the water. I would test them for the customers because it made them happy. Plus, if they set up a new tank, I could see if they had pneumonia in their tank and advise them whether to add fish or not at that point. So if they had a high ammonia level, I would say, uh, you know, maybe you better wait uh, till that comes down before you add fish. Again, in the filtration system, this is another sump that I made, homemade. Um, this one had just little pieces and parts left over, so it cost me hardly nothing. Uh, this is a small, this is a mini sump. Put my hand in here. You see how small this is. This is a little drawer I found at Target. And I've done the same thing. You know, I've drilled holes in each one of the drawers. Top here, I've got just a uh, bonded filter pad, uh, background pad. Uh, second drawer, I have floss, uh, filter floss. Uh, second drawer down, I've got lava rock. I'm finding this lava rock, it makes excellent filtration for your biological action. It's um, cheap, and you need, do need to clean it well when you first get it from the store because it's quite dirty. But once you get it cleaned out, it works uh, works really, really good for a substrate. And showing you a lava rack here, I've made a little thing in my 55. This is the lava rack that I use. I use the smaller pieces, you, on, especially on this uh, smaller sump I made. The bigger sump, you could use some of the bigger pieces. But uh, see, this is lava rock. I made a little display with it in this tank here. But you see, it's very porous, and it sets up for a lot of biological action in it, and uh, so it does a good job. And uh, I'm really tickled that I'm also using in the sump on this one. I'm using lava rock for my substance, and uh, very cheap. I think uh, a big bag of that was three ninety nine. Is all I paid for it. So, so it was very inexpensive. And then again in this 20, this is something I have never done before is use sand. This is uh, swimming pool filter sand that I used. Uh, I really like it. The Any debris tends to lay on top of it. Um, the, uh, you can vacuum that out very easily when you're doing a water change if you got debris laying on the top. But I really am liking this a lot. I've always thought about trying sand as a substrate and I'm just uh, this one I did it and I'm kind of pickled with it. They say it packs down and can release some problems down in it, but I haven't had it long enough to tell you that, but I do like the sand. Again, very very cheap, 50 pound bags, like $5.50. Uh, this is my 30 gallon tank. It's been up for about three months. You see I've got a great big old Paku in there, which she's definitely going to outgrow this tank. Those things grow very fast, but it's very hardy. And uh, again, I actually used the same goldfish you saw in my 20. I used that to cycle uh, this tank and uh, worked out well, and it's well cycled now. Um, I'm eventually, this is going to have African cichlids in this tank, is what it's going to come out. Uh, see, I've used some bricks to make some uh, decorations and hiding spots. Um, got this cool little alligator. I love my little alligator. He, uh, uh, yeah, I think he has a lot, especially in Florida here. It, uh, we have a lot of gators around, and so I have my own little gator, but I saw him, I had to have him. 
I think it's my 30 and again uh, filtration I do have a power filter uh, each of my tanks I do run a power filter but as well in this tank I have a dry sump filter that I used and uh, this was a manufactured one and these can run upwards three hundred dollars and the ones that I'm building out of the plastic drawers that I showed you less than a hundred bucks you can put one of those together so quite a savings so if you're a little handy and want to have another little project you can build uh, these sumps and uh, the nice thing about these sumps the heater setting right in here so the heater is not inside the tank and uh, this one has an overflow box. My other ones I'm using a PCB overflow. They're a little more temperamental. Uh, this type of box works better. And then it flows, you can see back here. Again, I'm getting reflections there, but it flows back into the tank. Flows down in it from here. And again, this is my 30, and I said I, I'm using sumps on these. Filtration is your number one key to successful aquarium because you got to keep that water quality good for your fish and uh, by using a good filtration system and not overfeeding you'll you'll get a good uh, good water quality and maintain it your fish will thrive in it all right a few little things i wanted to cap off that uh, people don't think about um, whenever you're cleaning aquarium equipment uh, and your hands and everything never use soap um, i back years ago when i had a my pet store, I would question people about uh, soap. I'm very, very careful about no soap sprays. Uh, use nothing on the glass Windex. Uh, use none of that stuff around your tanks because that definitely is going to give you a problem. And most people don't realize it or think about it uh, whenever you're working in your tanks and that. Uh, some of the ladies like to use hand lotions. It definitely is no good. Uh, you don't want to use any of those lotions or anything on your hands. Um, you know, a good way to make sure wash your hands in hot water only when you, before you get ready to work and make sure you don't have any things. You get residual. Soap leaves residual. And uh, that can, uh, can really give you a lot of problem by that residual soap even left on your hands and that. So you've got to think anything toxic uh, around your tanks will cause a problem and all of a sudden you'll start losing fish and you'll try to think well man what happened here you know i don't know nothing seemed like it changed but you didn't realize maybe you had gotten just washed your hands with soap and it got into the tank and left a residue in your tank and, and could cause your fish to die um, sprays around furniture polish this is the stuff in the air it can be absorbed uh, this is a living box and uh, anything that can be taken into it uh, can make it toxic to the fish and so you, that's one of the big things you must always keep in mind uh, what if I have around my tanks the water I'm drawing uh, where am I getting my water source from is it being contaminated by any chemicals or anything so you got to keep this in mind all the time there and uh, you'll have a successful uh, I used to always try to uh, be very informative in my pet store uh, to help people be successful in their aquarium hobby is uh, because if uh, I'd have a lifelong customer this way uh, if they were successful they'll be back you know and purchase more things off of me so you know it was a twofold it, it helped them be successful and it helped me out too as a pet store owner you know uh, uh, when you go to the pet store they're there as a business to make some money and uh, uh, good ways to make money is make happy customers and, and they do come back so there's some things to keep in mind. I wanted to show you this little tank here I made up. This is just one of those storage boxes. It's one of the clear ones. They're not exactly clear, but they're as clear as they're going to be. And uh, I set this up with a heater. And I've got a uh, power filler on it. And I've been cycling this tank for almost a month. And I'm going to use this tank for oh, maybe several different things. I showed you I had some uh, feeder goldfish and some minnows. and stuff that I don't want in my main display tank and I'll probably store them in this tank here till I can find maybe somebody wants them or if I set up another tank I'll use them again or I can use this tank as a hospital tank um, get maybe a fish that's been hurt picked on by the others and they can recover in here and uh, this here I just threw some sand in the bottom of it and uh, I have down in here I have a 
an old filter bag that uh, had some charcoal in it. I threw that right out of the tank that's been cycled to help add the bacteria to get this tank cycled through. And uh, I even put uh, LED lights in there. I had these LED strips that I bought real cheap here. I'll uh, turn those on and show it to you. Yeah, there's this little tank with the LEDs lit up. And uh, you can see in there pretty good. You'll be able to see the fish. Not as clear as a glass tank, but it's virtually cost me. It did cost me originally, but I had them. So I didn't have to buy nothing extra. I had a little power filter and I had a, uh, a heater. And as you can see the top, I just mounted them up there, drilled some holes and uh, zip tied them to the top there. And so, you know, I'll be able to come out here, whatever fish is in here, either hospital tank or storage, I'll be able to enjoy them with the uh, little LED light that I made. So just a little cheap uh, aquarium. It's a, really a full aquarium. You can make an aquarium this way. If you wanted to save money, you could do the same thing put some proper filtration on it and set it up just like a regular tank there and uh, like I said it's not as nice as a glass tank but it definitely would work if you was on a strict budget. Hey I hope this uh, little video helped you out and uh, showed you some of the things that uh, I do to keep my tanks here. Uh, like I said I've been at it for a long time and uh, I've been pretty successful at it and so I uh, hope you enjoyed this, hope it helped you out and uh, uh, especially some of the newcomers to the hobby that they can uh, uh, you know find a a good way to uh, keep their tanks balanced out and uh, be successful in keeping their fish in that. Um, a lot of people have different ideas. Uh, a lot of people uh, like any other hobby is full of all kinds of different ideas and, and that and as long as they work they're good. You know that's not the problem. Uh, as long as you're uh, whatever you do is successful at it that's the way you should do it. But these are some of my ideas and how I maintain my tanks and keep them up. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, hey, do me a favor, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment box. And uh, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We make all kinds of videos from, uh, I have a morning coffee chat I do every morning. Uh, done things on camping, uh, road trekking, motorcycles, just all kinds of subjects that I can think of. So. Uh, uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys the next time. Mm -hmm.